So what have you got right there, Alia? This is boiled linseed oil, but in the traditional sense, it's actually boiled in an airtight container, which causes it uh, to, or allows it to dry um, in a reasonable amount of time. Uh, but Curtis is right, all modern quote unquote boiled linseed oils are just have uh, highly toxic chemical dryers in them like lead uh, and uh, yeah. other heavy metals. Yeah, I don't think any of them have lead in it now, but they have octate and I think that's the way you pronounce it. And uh, uh, so is that a commercial product that you've got there? Yeah, this is made by a company. Well, it's called Allback. Um, and it's, uh, I think it's Swedish linseed oil. Um, and I got it from Viking Sales Incorporated in Victor, New York www.solventfreepaint.com. So there you go. I haven't been paid a cent by them. In fact, I paid them a good bit of money for this stuff, but there's their little ad. Wow. Uh, is it, have, have you used it enough to, to see if it dries? No, Does you it, can see how full this jar is. I haven't right. used it hardly at all. Okay. Yeah. So, so, so you really don't know what the drying time on the stuff is going to be then. No, I'll lay this rag out and we'll see. Right. Uh, when I first started doing this, I was buying a, well, I, in fact, I talked Curtis into it, a linseed oil um, that was made in California. Uh, and it would dry hard. You know, your rag would be stiff overnight. Um, but it stopped doing that. And I sat down in one of my chairs that I was going to deliver to, company, to a customer and watched a movie with popcorn in my shorts. And uh, I had little popcorn spots and sweat spots from my legs where they touched the seat because the oil hadn't dried. And that was a week after I put it on. And I said, well, I'll never do that again. So that's when I switched to um, shellac as a uh, top coat on my chairs. And I've been using that ever since. But it's going to be a lot shinier than this finish here. Well, that, yeah. And that company was BioShield. And I bought from them for, for years. And they... They had this oil that Ailey and I used to buy called Herbal Oil Number no. Two. And uh, the first video that I shot on YouTube when I'm finishing my comeback chair, I used that oil. And it was right at that point that it quit drying with me. Uh, and I don't know, I called them up and they said they didn't change anything. But boy, did I see a change in it. I couldn't get it to dry. So I've bounced around with different stuff. And finally, I've come back around to where Alia is with this, just the shellac. Uh, it's, it's a great finish. It's got, you know, it's, it's got a big learning curve with the stuff and I'm still a neophyte with it, but, uh, uh, but I, I learn every time I, I put the stuff on and it's, you know, completely non-toxic. It's, it's what uh, some medicines are covered with, I think. M&Ms used to be covered with it. Uh, and, uh, you know, I like the fact that there's doesn't involve any petroleum products and you're buying it from uh, small small manufacturers and uh, and you know it's been around for for thousands of years uh, there was a Do you use, uh, the company I get mine from is uh, shellacfinishes.com have you ever used that stuff it's an Indian guy out in California that gets it directly from India and it's yeah. amazing it's totally wax free totally clear Really nice shellac. It's not. It's not shellac.net. No, no. It's shellacfinishes.com. Okay. So I bought some different. stuff from from shellac.net, and it had it was uh, dark and waxy, and had bits of stuff in it, and uh -huh. I I liked it a whole lot better. Okay. Okay. Um, yeah. Something else I was going, boy, I hope I can remember it. There's something very important I was going to say about finishes. Stop finishes. <laughs> I can't, and I can't remember what it, what it was. Maybe it'll come to me as we, uh, uh, as we, as we talk, but uh, uh, I use so turbo we... on the spoons. Uh, now, mm -hmm. you know, so one of, I mean, you know, tongue oil, it's a hundred percent tongue oil. So you can buy a tongue oil product and it might have just a little bit of, tongue oil in it or something but uh, but but you can buy 100 percent pure tongue oil too 
and it takes a little while for it to dry, but I pop the, sco the spoons into my drying kiln and, and I'll dry them over, overnight really hard so I could put three coats on them in, in three days. And, and it's a nice non-toxic non finish. And, you know, so, so that, that brings up the point as far as uh, the toxicity of finishes go once, once it's dry. So we ran into this when we were dealing with uh, uh, selling products from Honduras where I was working down there with, with green wood and we were selling them through or we were talking about selling them through places like 10,000 Villages and, uh, and, and they're very interested in the finish and the toxicity of the finish. And if you talk to the chemist out there, uh, Bob Flexner for one and some others, and I'm sure these guys know what they're talking about, they'll tell you that, uh, uh, that at least you know 30 days or less after you apply any finish on that it's all of them are, are non-toxic. Uh, and uh, so you don't need to worry about that. Well, okay, maybe that's true and maybe that's not true. I mean, I can't argue with them because they're the, they're the ones that know, but the buying public has a different perception. And if I'm sitting there at a craft fair and I've got my spoons and they ask me if it's a non-toxic finish and I go into a spill saying that all finishes are non-toxic once they've dried, I'm wasting my breath. Uh, so just use a finish that's non-toxic and I can say, yes, I use 100% I use pure tongue oil and that gets the job, gets the job done. So uh, yeah, I make baby, baby rattles and sell them. And I use that stuff from BioShield because it's organic. Uh, which is, you know, it's hard to argue with that, you know, it's certified organic. So you could probably pour this stuff on your oatmeal and drink it. I don't know. 